Hello everybody, and welcome to Dawn of War Soulstorm. My name's Unseen Strike, and today I'm going to take you down the rabbit hole that is Warhammer 40k, and the great big universe and everything that encompasses it. Now, it is quite a deep rabbit hole, so we're just going to take it slow today. I'm going to pump the brakes. We're going to be laser focused in on the very basics okay it is a complicated game this is quite an old game all right we're talking at least well i want to say 10 years maybe more maybe maybe close to 15 years that might be a little too much a little extreme but this is quite an old game um unfortunately thq went down the shitter many moons ago relic also abandon us in dawn of war 3 again these are darker tales for darker days today we're gonna stay positive all right, we're going to keep basic. We're going to stay focused on just very basic things. All right, don't worry too much about what's happening in the background here. Had some mods on, but it's still Soulstorm underneath all this fancy paint. All right, so we're going to start off with some real basics here. The maps. All right, plenty of maps. There's 2v2s, 1v1s, 3v3s, 4v4s. We're going to stick to real simple stuff today. Uh, with just some simple 1v1s. I'm going to throw an AI on here for us, and we'll go through the basics. Um, a lot of very specific maps are played heavily. Uh, lots of fan favorites. Uh, Fata Morga is one of them. So people love this map. It's very balanced. Three extremely specific lanes. This is the one we're going to stick with. Uh, another great 1v1 map, Fallen City. Two lanes. But when you cross these bridges across this river in the middle of the map, um, you have lots of lane coverage here. Um, uh, the game, again, it's all about taking your troops from point A, your base, to point B, the enemy base. All right. Now, before we go too deep down the rabbit hole and learning how to play and all the rules and whatnot, let's just talk real quick on who and what you're going to be playing as. Now... I could sit here and talk for hours and days on all the lore and different backgrounds and everything about factions. We don't need that today. We'll just do some real brief overview. Um, we'll talk about play styles. We won't really talk too much about everything behind the scenes. We'll keep it focused on the game. So, we have the Imperial Guard. This is my favorite faction. That's why we're starting with them. Now, the Imperial Guard, lots of massed infantry. Very specialized leaders, massed armored vehicles, very weak, low hit point models, um, until you start boosting them with specialists and such. Again, think about your common man or, or you going out onto the battlefields and hostile planets with aliens and technology you couldn't even comprehend. That's the Imperial Guard. We have the Space Marines. All right. Space Marines. All right. Just think the common man can't do it all. Space Marines are humans genetically enhanced and modified and given the best weapons and armor that technology has available. Very limited, though, in terms of how many units you can field and, and in the lore, they're very, very rare to see. Um, Space Marines, very heavy infantry, um, gener genetic, generic, however you want to pronounce it, generic, all-purpose infantry. Um, you need to destroy vehicles, they can do it. You need to destroy light infantry, heavy infantry, they can do it. Um, you need them to hold points, they'll lock it down with heavy bolter fire and weapons fire. Um, very high utility um, and just all-around general-purpose infantry. They'll get it done. Uh, that's Space Marines. All right, we have on the flip side of Space Marines, we have Chaos Space Marines. Uh, Chaos Space Marines, traitors in the lore. They betrayed humanity and mankind. They went renegade and took all their cool tools and gadgets and went off and to do their own thing. Um, same kind of deal as the Space Marines themselves, heavy infantry with the, the included bonus. They have more demons and kind of powers and psychic uh, magic, uh, just out of the box stuff heavy infantry charges um lots of high melee damage you know the demons want to get in combat um they don't have as much in the terms of vehicle play that the space marines do but the demons make up for that little hole in their uh roster jump over to the eldar the eldar think of elves in the, the fantasy setting these are elves in space very high speed high mobility high damage um if you catch them with their, you know, not looking, you'll kill them. Very low hit point models, almost like the Imperial Guard. Again, speed is the key. They have good psychic powers. Um, 
very strong vehicle play, especially at the high level. You'll see uh, a good Falcon, which is a transport unit, carrying very deadly payloads, and you won't be able to catch them or keep them. Uh, on the flip side of the Eldar, we have the Dark Eldar. Um, pirates, raiders, um, very cheeky poison weaponry, um, very strong abilities and such um, that really will torture you. <laughs> Even playing against them, they could be a pain in the butt. Um, in game-wise, they're very strong rushing faction. If you can hold them off for a few minutes, generally you're okay. If you can hold their rush off, you will win. Um, good at Dark Eldar players will make it work, but in my experience, at, at, at my level of play, you just gotta hold off the early game, and you can usually overpower them. Um, especially playing like with the Imperial Guard. You just flood them with numbers. They're done. There's no way. And we also have Orcs. Another faction with lots of crazy numbers and, and, and uh, different abilities that are out of the ordinary. These are Space Mushrooms. Orcs, just like Fantasy. These Orcs here love the battle. Um, the bigger the battle, the bigger the fight, the better the orc is going to do. More orcs will come. Have a nice big wall. All right. Uh, with the orcs, lots of ramshackle put together vehicles. Um, in game, their buildings have turrets on top, so it's tough to just rush them. Um, they'll hold you off. They're, they're, they, they make it painful to fight them until you get some kind of heavier weaponry. Um, you get an orc in melee, you're in for a bad time. You generally want to keep them at range um, and kind of pick away at them. Uh, do damage before combat comes in. Um, orcs are very good in this game. Very, very strong faction. Very well put together. Fun fact, the Space Marines were, at least the Gen 2 Space Marines, were created to fight orcs. So, very good. Don't underestimate them in combat. Uh, who else do we have? We have Necrons. Uh, undead, Terminator-esque robots. Very slow, high damage units. Uh, unique trait yeah, for the Necrons, they have the ability, I think it's 30% chance when you kill one of their models in game, they're going to stand right back up and start fighting again. So very scary to fight, you want to keep the pressure on them early, and you want to press them hard. They also, uh, again this is a little off topic, but their units, uh, or their racial ability, only collect power. Out of the major resources in the game. They only run on power. They don't need to focus on capturing points too much. They just build power generators and just keep on cooking. So you want to keep the pressure on them. You do not want to get them to late game. They are very strong there. Uh, we also have the Tau Empire. One of the newer factions to be added to Warhammer 40k. The Tau are focused a lot on very long range combat. You don't want to catch them in uh, melee. They don't have very poor melee stats. They need to use uh, auxiliary and mercenary troops uh, to kind of fill that gap. They have something called the Crute Race, an alien bird faction um, that works in melee very well to screen for their heavy infantry in the background that will just, just fill you with plasma. That's it. So you want to get on top of them. Um, very strong vehicles towards the late game. You want to keep them pressured. Do not want to let the Tau build up a critical mass of fire warriors, uh, and which is their mainline infantry that we're looking at here. They'll run you over, so you want to keep them pressured. There they are, the sisters of battle. Um, think Space Marines, a little less genetically modified, a little bit less on the better equipment. Um, very strong faction as well. Love their flamethrowers. Absolutely love them. Um, they have a unique resource called Faith. Again, we'll talk about that later when we start working on Sisters of Battle. Uh, they have lots of really cool abilities with this resource that they can spend. Um, very strong mainline infantry. Um, vehicle play is not as strong. Um, you don't want to let them build up with all their flamethrowers. You kind of want to make sure you keep their models low. Um, they have really strong commander units as well. Um, again, just another strong faction out there. You just want to keep, keep an eye on them when you fight them. Uh, lots of really cool tactics and build orders you can do with them. Uh, very diverse. This was a good addition to the game, in my opinion. That's a conflicting opinion, but I think they're a pretty cool add-on with the stuff they bring to the table. All right, one last thing. Before we jump into a game, I just want to talk real quick about race difficulty, playing-wise. Um, from easiest to hardest, again, this is all personal opinion. I've been playing the game well over a thousand hours, easily. And that's just on a Soulstorm alone on the Steam account. Uh, I've been playing this game since it came out. So, 
for me personally, if I was recommending a new player to play the game, I'd say stick with the Space Marines. Um, very straightforward race, solid, strong frontline infantry units, decent vehicle support to back it up, very strong tier 3, very straightforward to play. Uh, the next easiest race I would recommend, um, I would probably want to say... Oh god, it's tough. It's real tough. Um, the Sisters of Battle are quite easy to play. Um, their faith mechanic is a little tough to kind of get the hang of, but they're very similar to Space Marines. And on that same tier, I would say Chaos. Chaos is also more one of the easier factions to play. Um, next, I would rank uh, the Imperial Guard. In, in, in terms of difficulty to play, and the only reason I put them after Space Marines is if you don't macro their leaders correctly and get the right amount of vehicles up, you're gonna lose. They are not the easiest race to play with their infantry. And early on, you think that's all you can play is infantry, or you want to mass Imperial Guard, that's not the way to do it right away. Um, next, I would probably say the Orcs. Orcs are pretty good, same thing, you don't want to mass just Orc boys, you want to be strategic about your Orcs where you put them. Um, who else haven't we covered? I would then say Eldar, the Eldar, again, not super complicated, but their units are fragile, um, and if you build the wrong units, they're very costly units compared to most races, I, I want to say like a, a Dark Reaper squad is like 210 wreck, and that's base cost before researching it in the Soul Shrine, again, a, a lot of these words don't make sense, but their units are very expensive, if you throw them down the gutter, you're going to lose, um, and then the Tau. Their ranged preference can be very difficult for newer players, a lot of microing and moving around, a lot of early game harass with Vespids and Crute. If you do it right, Tau is, a, is, a, is just easy to play, but very hard to kind of master and get to that level. And the last uh, faction I would say it's the hardest to play is either the Dark Eldar, because um, they're not suited for large team fights, they're a raiding faction. So when you put them in this environment, they already start at a disadvantage. They have very strong early, early game. Their mid game is all right. They have pretty decent commander units um, and lots of cool little buffs for their army, you know, like plagued weapons and, and invisibility, um, a lot of like CCing and such, but they're very difficult to play. Um, I've seen a good Dark Eldar player beat the best of the best. I've seen it. it it's just, it's all about positioning and unit wise. And then last but not least, we have the Necrons. Um, very slow, um, again, their resources don't really work the same way as other factions, um, while, yeah, initially you see, uh, Necron warriors are free, you just build them however you want, there's a, a cost in time, and that's time your monolith could be making something useful, or getting an upgrade, or teching up to tier 2, 3, and so on, as the Necrons, um, while their late game is very good, some maps do not have relics, so you need to be careful when you play Necrons because, ah, oh, I'm going to play the Necrons here, and then there's no relic, you can't get that monolith, your, your super heavy unit that is the backbone of your army. Um, so, in my, again, this is all my personal opinion, I think the Necrons uh, are probably one of the harder races to play with the Dark Eldar up there being the hardest. Again, Space Marines, your bread and butter units, start with them, have a good time, have fun mass space marines and run people's bases over you can do it and it's a good time doing it too all right so now with all that let's jump into the game all right here we are now some of you may be going oh this looks a little different a little different this is my third take doing this <laughs> i had to uninstall my unification mod and i just reinstalled normal soulstorm doing so caused the audio in the game to be so loud i couldn't hear anything on the recording neither did my editor he wanted to beat me up that's okay we're on attempt number three um i'm gonna go over the game rules again real quick just to show you guys again it's, it's much more streamlined um same thing with the races it's all very simple races um i just went over just real quick the ranking of races that i feel are easiest to play for new people so there's that um, for the game options, uh, you just want to stick to your standard Annihilate and Game Timer. Game Timer is super important because you want to make sure you can kind of keep an eye on how long the game's been going. You know, if I'm playing 
you know, anywhere from five to ten minutes in a game, I should be going, okay, if I'm versing Chaos, I know they're quick teching. You can kind of get a bead on what your opponent's doing, where you should be um, five minutes in. I definitely should be teching up to tier two, tier three. I should have X amount of units on the field already. Um, assassinate, I do like to throw this on from time to time. Um, and just to mess with my lobbies when we have some random fun days on Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, with the group of guys and, and girls when we stream. Um, I do like to mess around with this assassinate enemy commander units and they are immediately you're, you're just you're kicked out of the game It's fun spices it up destroy HQ is just like annihilate kill your HQ and the enemy goes instead of annihilate destroying everything Economic victories amass a certain amount of money take and hold um, Is capturing critical locations control area is strategic points sudden death um, any strategic point loss is an immediate game loss um, AI difficulty you're going to want to stick to standard or easy if you're just starting the game. Standard's even a little tough if you let the AI get the better of you. Uh, I played standard on one of my recordings, and the AI actually turret rushed me. Super surprised. Loved it. Had a good game. Um, hard to insane. The AI is going to start cheating. On insane, if you let the AI get tier 3 you, you, and you don't have good map control, you're most likely going to lose. They're cheaters. I, you're hearing it here? All well, these other options are all standard stuff for RTS games. Keep your starting resources on standard. Um, I like to keep my teams unlocked. Normally you do. On team games, again, I want to see chaos. Say the other team's about to win. You know, do some diplomacy in the chat and kind of fracture the team. Maybe it turns into a free-for-all. I like that. Um, I don't think cheat codes work on this version of Soulstorm. Just keep it off. It's better that way. Starting locations fixed. Keep your game speed on normal. Again, resource sharing is another one. Sometimes I like to turn that on um, on team games. Kind of see some wonky builds where everybody feeds the Necron player all their power. And Necron's on tier 3 in like 5-6 minutes. Crazy stuff like that. And resource rate. Just keep that on the standard. So that's just your normal rules. Alright, we're going to load in again in the Fata Morga. One of the more uh, popular maps you'll see on the... Uh, online leaderboards and, and, and on the online board game lobbies. I'm going to go Space Marines, we'll go Ultramarines, um, and we'll verse, let's verse Chaos, we'll keep it simple here. Uh, we'll verse the Iron Wars. Alright, so again, in this little gameplay, uh, we're going to go over the basics, we're going to go through not more specific builds, just some general tips, pointers, um, just kind of units and, and key points of interest and the things you want to get to for Space Marines. All right, we're going to be spawning in, and immediately the first thing we see is our worker. So you want to go ahead and get your worker building things. All right, so we have our worker here. He's building. You can always identify your worker with a little tiny wrench over his head. And any units on your field, uh, or on the field, you can control in the bottom right-hand corner down here. It's your unit control panel. Um, for builders, you just click the little wrenches here and follow forth. You want a chapel barracks for space marines. And while the barracks is building, we want to click on our HQ, and we want to build scouts. This is your generic, um, again, it's a scout, basically. It's, it's a space marine before they're space marines. Um, they have a little bit more speed than space marines. They're not really fit for combat until you get the sniper rifle upgrade, um, which, again, is very situational. Sometimes you want that upgrade, sometimes you don't. And what you want to do, the first thing is, get your scouts capturing these points. You'll see these points scattered all over the map. And any infantry unit can capture these points. Okay? There's three types of points. There's normal strategic locations. And they give you money. And we'll go over the money in a second. You have relics over here these kind of golden ones these will give you access to your tier three units they're very important you generally again certain races it's more important than others you want to kind of focus on them heretics here they come let me get my space marine squad over here i'm gonna retreat i don't want to take any losses so you want to keep your infantry capturing these points. And a general rule of thumb is your infantry should always be capturing it. And even just a goal of yours, even if it's vehicles, whatever it is. Always, always, always be going and looking to capture extra points. If you're spending money on these army units, they cost money. You want to get them to work, these lazy bums. They're just standing around doing nothing. You are paying for these troops. Oh, we lost a couple scouts. We're going to pull back a little bit. No, please. Anyway, got a little distracted with the firefight there. 
Um, but you see, on this strategic location, I built a listening post. Every faction has these. This prevents your enemy from just walking up and, and just running it down and just immediately decapturing it. Um, it costs 100 wrecks. Some factions it's more, some it's less. And when you put a listening post on this location, just have them go out. Um, it will get you more money, and they can be upgraded three times. We're going to chase them down. How dare they attack us like this? I lose my other scout squad? No. Okay. Get them to capture that point. We need the money more than we need the chase. Um, so yeah, you want to make sure that you are capturing as many points as possible. And I have the final location type or uh, flag type is a critical location. There's generally only maybe two to three of these on a map. And, carry a big gun. and you want to make sure the they're not super important to get. They give you resources as well. But more importantly, they're going to give you vision of large swaths of the map. And like this critical location here in the middle of the bridge, you can see your enemy army approaching and get you time to prepare. So always just be aware of the map, where points are, um, key locations of interest. Keep your units kind of always capturing and moving around. Getting into position. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And capturing these points gets you requisition. That's this blue resource up here. This is what you're going to spend your most of your money on for basic infantry. And you're going to eventually want to start converting that requisition into power. And you'll see here, I already built a generator. This generator here is going to, when you initially build a generator, it immediately provides a large boost of power. And then from there, I'm just going to have them go there. Have them push up and capture here. This day shall be a glorious one for the Imperium. But you want to make sure you're getting your requisition and your power up. You want to get safely to tier 2. So say right now we want to get to tier 2. So we can see the enemy is already in the middle. We want to capture this point. They shouldn't. We don't want them to see that. That's free information. Okay. And we're going to just fall back with these scouts for the moment. And you just want to kind of keep map control. So say we killed one or two squads there. And we have all these points. And we're looking real good. We're going to want to tech up to tier 2. Alright. And see there's an enemy squad over here. Maybe we'll pull this second space marine squad over here. We'll pull back. Our scouts are in good melee. Any enemy positions. We just want to run away and we'll let our space marines clean up these these cultists nice and cleanly. We have all this extra money now and this requisition and power, the whole nine. We can safely tech up to tier two. We're going to tech on up and that's going to give us a whole bunch more abilities, um, just a whole bunch of different skill sets to fight the enemy. You'll see they're trying to go and capture our point. Eventually we're going to want to stop that, but for now we'll just hang out. Oh, there's another... Oh, what? What is this? What do you think that you're doing? Hmm? Clean them up. So, again, while, while this is happening, your space marines are your mainline infantry. And as you can see, they will rip through these cultists with no problem. You don't want to get your scouts caught in any kind of unnecessary combat with these clowns. Um, they're a little bit better in melee, and they will have more models. Your scout squad can only be put up to four. And again, back in this lower right-hand corner, we got a little fight. We're going to back up. Uh, if I want to add or do anything to my squads, we want to go right down here. So this is how we control the squad. It's very smart by the AI making them run in the melee. Uh, you're going to see here, if I want to reinforce squad members, I can add them right here. Uh, in tier 2, I can throw sergeants on my squads, which is basically a small kind of miniature leader for the squad. Um, provides really good buffs and very high damage output. And if I want to add weapons to my Space Marine squad, I would do so there. Now, I can't build any weapons yet because I need an armory. So we're going to tech into an armory now. And when you build the armory in Tier 1, you get access to Flamers, which are nice early game weapons. They don't scale very well into late game, but they do have very nice damage output. And we just hit Tier 2. Pull back with these scouts. And we're also going to get sniper rifles from the uh, HQ. Let's go ahead and put some pressure on these Marines. And now, with my scouts here, I have them on stand ground. They will not move unless engaged. If I put them on hold your ground, you see how they immediately run forward? We want to keep scouts on stand ground and ranged stance. Most units can switch between the two ranged and assault. We want to keep our scouts as far away from the battle as possible. They're not melee units. And you'll see this this listening post can take a beating from any kind of normal fire. 
So that's not normal fire. We're gonna we're gonna cons <laughs> we're gonna consolidate our army here. We'll get a sergeant over here. We'll we'll pull everything over. Well, then they go right for my poor little scouts. And we'll get these guys over here, the snipers. Hey, come with me. Okay. Now the enemy lord is up. You'll see I upgraded my listening post to tier two, and I have a gun on it. It's taking a fair bit of damage now, so I'm going to pull my workers over to repair it. I don't think we're going to make it in time, but we still want to rebuild that. Okay, and here we are. We want to keep the our commander in range stance. Uh, commander units have perfect accuracy. Okay, and what that means is when they're standing still on ranged, they will not miss. Now, this is not good early game. While it looks really cool, and when they're kind of both mealing each other, um, our commander's stuck. You're, you're, uh, when the two commander units are fighting each other in the field, they get stuck on each other. Um, you kind of lose control. They, they don't respond to the commands. So you want to kind of keep your commander screened. So say we were doing that fight again and we had both our squads in position. We'd keep our commander in range and he would shoot behind our squad. Now say this squad gets engaged by something bad in melee. Any commander unit we can attach to the squad. And now he will aid that squad automatically, and commanders in melee are powerhouses. So you want to just keep an eye on that, keep your commander preserved. He's very expensive. Okay, you want to kind of keep him screened, keep him healthy. And we just rebuilt that listening post. It's no big deal. We want to keep building generators because we want to use it to attack. So we got that armory. We now have access to, t to all of our weaponry. We're facing chaos, and that has generally a lot of heavy armor. It's because they're also space marines, so we're going to get some plasma weaponry. Plasma is good against heavy infantry, um, tougher models that don't go down. Um, they can be fired on the move. Say we, the chaos team is going to come at us with vehicles. We're going to tech one squad into missile launchers. Missile launchers and heavy bolters. Heavy bolters is basically a turret on your squad. It's the same thing on this listening post. Um, the squad has to be standing still to shoot that. So you kind of want to be vigilant of where you're setting up. So if we know the plasma weapon squad can move and fire, the slight accuracy penalty, we want to screen with our plasma weapon and our missile launcher or heavy bolter squad can unleash fire all the way like this and you can shoot generally further than you can see so you want to kind of have this squad over here and that gives vis vision and then you can shoot now if we want to get a little more vision there's in the listening post a skull probe if you get that out on the field the skull probe provides a nice amount of vision um, for very little cost they build quite quickly the enemy's pushing up so let's go punish them how dare they take our points let's move up a little bit we have our snipers and our squads are fully upgraded our skull probe's coming. I'm going to send the skull probe across the map. All right. Now, from the armory, you want to always be upgrading. Upgrades are very expensive. So, generally, you want to focus on getting enough units for the upgrades to benefit. You don't want to just be upgrading nothing. That feels bad. So, there's actually the Chaos Lord. Let's see if we can pick him off a little bit. Snipers are pretty good versus commander units. So, you'll see that plasma weapon. It's not as good versus the cultist. I mean, it's going to do damage. But you generally want to keep the plasma weapons firing on marine models, commander models. I mean, look at the damage he's taking. That's just two plasma guns. We'll keep them standing there. Again, we have an, a third marine squad here. We'll get them with some bolters. Um, so you want to make sure you have enough marines before you start investing in this. There's stuff like health upgrades, range damage, uh, upgrades for your plasma weapons for sergeants, librarians, commanders, any kind of commander unit. Melee upgrades for your commanders. Uh, heavy weapon increase is good if, say, you only have like two or three Space Marine squads, you can't afford to build more. That's a fantastic weapon. You can add four weapons total. And then Grey Knight charges, which is a little bit later. It's coming up now. Let's go ahead and I'll get these buildings building while I'm talking. So, yeah, we're comfortably in tier two. That uh, allows us to get vehicles. And we'll get the chaplain. You can also make your scouts go invisible, which is great. For Space Marines to upgrade vehicle and squad cap, it's from the HQ. So say we have three Space Marine squads and two scouts, which we do now. Um, we can only get two more Space Marine squads or four more scout squads. So 
to get more, you have to pay another 150 rack on top. That could be expensive. So say while we're getting this upgrade, maybe now we want to look into some health upgrades. Uh, we'll get the range damage increase, and we'll start getting that cooking. When you initially start the game, you only have two vehicle population, so you can't really afford to get some of the bigger vehicles right away. So you could generally you would get two land speeders maybe, or maybe you get one land speeder tempest, which is a flyer, and kind of support your army that way. And then you'd want to tech into another 125 for your vehicle increase to get something, say like a dreadnought, which is a, a nice frontline melee walker. And we have a whole lot of power stocked up, so now I think, see, here comes that vehicle we were talking about. And he goes right for my missile launchers, the cheeky bastard. We'll stop him there, and they'll line up, <clears throat> and they'll get ready to fire. And as you can see, the missile launcher can't really see what's going on. And this heavy, this bolter squad's doing a nice job. Let's pull back a little bit. Let's get this vehicle. Land speeders are nice little skimmer units. Heavy bolter and a twin link sponsor bolter on the bottom. Just keep moving this vehicle back. Our snipers are going to make short, short work of these heavy uh, space marines. They also do something called morale damage. This is a nice time we can talk about it now. So on the bottom of every squad, there's a little blue bar here. That's the morale of the unit. Okay, there's actually quite a bit of space marines here. Now it's nice. Nice little battle. We want to get our scouts out. You can see that scout <laughs> just got picked up and immediately sink killed. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> hit the screen. So we just want to keep moving, but the morale is broken on that unit. It's now doing significantly less damage. We want to pull back from this bolter shooting at us as well. We just want to make sure our missile launcher is fired. That's all we want to do. We pull our scouts back. This is a transport vehicle, the Rhino. It's practically free, and it's always a good investment. Always, always, always it's a good investment. Did we lose that whole squad? Where'd they go? Yeah, I think we did. Poor bastards. Where'd they die? They die over here? Fallen Brothers will forever remember as the Emperor's finest. Where'd they go? Let's break this. Yeah, the, the land speeders will shred. Absolutely shred any kind of armor. Uh, any kind of infantry units. And again, we want to keep getting upgrades. Let's get some grenades for our units. The chaplain's done. We'll get him out. I built another barracks, didn't I? Let's get another Space Marine squad over here. And we're just going to keep pressure. As you can see, Chaos is already Tier 3. I've been talking for about 15 minutes. A good Chaos player will be Tier 3, probably sub-10 minutes. Um, so you have to be real careful with Chaos. They, uh, they're they very scary. I'm going to tech up to Tier 3 now. We have the ability to do so. Our vehicle's taking some damage. We can always repair it with a worker. Moving out. Let's get them out here with more missile launchers, get another surgeon, send him this way. That unit that Chaos is using is an artillery piece and a, and a siege walker. Um, it can be real tricky to deal with, so just be careful with it. Um, a strategy Chaos used to do long, long ago was mass those. Look at this clown, he took one of our land speeders out. Let's just jump away and we'll keep shooting him. Let's get another one, just for the memes. So, Space Marines have pretty solid vehicles. Now, that's out of the Machine Cult. Out of, once we're going Tier 3, the Librarium is upgrades for your commander. Inspiring Aura is a key unit ability you want to get. It increases the damage of all units around the Force Commander, and it's a passive. You have to do nothing. All right, there's an Apothecary, which lets you heal your units around the, him. Here he is here. I just want to pull back a little bit. We're getting... Those obliterators, heavy tier 3 units, 4 chaos. They're pretty scary. Uh, generally, you want to get a unit in melee there. This chaplain's a sub commander. He automatically does what uh, an apothecary does. So, again, a popular build would be to rush him. And you'll see that online. And you would put him in tangent with Grey Knights. And the Grey Knights is a very. It's more of a shock troop, personally. Um get the ability now they basically charge into combat and they are very scary to deal with and they're actually unique in the ability that they have is when you're shooting in an infantry unit your models will just shoot across and just shoot it whoever they want the great knights all the units in the squad will pick the same target 
and gun it down. It can be very scary. So people will put them on range stance. They'll run them in and they'll put the chaplain in the squad so they get healed. And they basically are just miniature snipers and they are scary. Very scary to fight. So they're coming across now. And while we have a little bit of time, let me talk about this. We're tier 3 in a moment, or we are. To go to tier 3.5, you need to get in your machine cult and upgrade heavy armor deployment. 450, 450 is very steep. So make sure you've got good battlefield control, or you're at least aware of what's happening, before you just kind of tech that. And look at that, these, these obliterators are here. They're going to make short work of my poor land speeders, but that's okay. Let's push them a little bit. They want to they do that to me? How dare they? So rude. Just pull them up. And an upgrade that you can get for your commanders. Again, this plasma pistol upgrade is huge for units like the like Chaplain and the Commander. We want him in range stance. He now gets a plasma weapon. And let's, this should pull the AI back to us. Yeah, here they come, these clowns. And we want to take that out. Now, the chaplain also has a CC on him, which immediately breaks morale. Very strong. And, as you can see, they just get melted. This is a lot of plasma. And look at the Grey Knights. You'll see they all shoot. They have, I'm pretty sure these are twin-linked bolters on their wrists. They are very scary. You do not want to mess with them. They also have, again, a charge and a psychic storm here. Um, it does nice AoE damage. And it's good to kind of make the enemy reposition. It also slows. All right, our heavy armor is done. And we can get the Space Marine's key unit. I'm also going to get the Librarian, the other key unit for the Space Marine. Oh, well, this is awkward for you guys, isn't it? Let's put a little minefield down. Love me some mines. Scouts awaiting orders. The warriors of the and you can see everybody's now healing up. Um, and at this point, this is where the Space Marines get really tough to deal with. This is a really, really tough blob to deal with on ranged. Um, there's Apothecary's healing, the Chaplain's healing, the stacks, the healing does not stack. So, key note there. Does not stack. And as you'll see, we need a little more money. We, we kind of need to keep spending. So, on our generators, there's an ability to pretty much double the power you get from generators. And on requisition points, there's a, uh, a thing here to double requisition. And that upgrade stacks twice. on, And that's not per generator. It's just globally. So sometimes it's good if you feel like you have a good lead, you have a nice bank, and you want to spend it real quick. It's worth it to get that upgrade, and you will see it increase quite a bit. Um, so our librarian's out. This is a really strong buff unit. Um, he's got a nice AoE smite ability, and this will devastate light infantry. You will melt through some factions. And I almost forgot our orbital relay. This is the Space Marine Tier 3 special building. Uh, the orbital relay. And speaking of special building uh, vehicles, this is our 3.5 heavy unit, the Land Raider. This is more... It, again, it's a tank. Yes, but it, in this sense... It is supposed to tank for you. It's not a damage unit. It's more of a tank. 10,000 hit points is no slouch. Okay. It has an ability called Machine Spirit, which lets you go in and pretty much soak just copious amounts of damage. Um, and while that's soaking for you, let's go ahead and get the rest of our heavy weapons. Let's move from there. Once you build the orbital relay, you get an orbital bombardment. Force Commander can call down uh, a orbital bombardment ability here, and anything caught in that explosion radius is going to take huge damage. Again, you'll see our missile launchers now tiered up with both damage uh, upgrades and the Force Commander's little blue buff here. Huge damage. Those vehicles stood no chance. Um, these bad boys, Predators, when they come out, the Predator is your damage dealer for your vehicles. The Predator can be spec'd out. Say the enemy's got a lot of uh, vehicles. You can purchase vehicle anti-vehicle upgrades, and the last cannons will rip through vehicles. And the other one is just default loadout is just auto cannons versus infantry. And we're now tier three as well. So the final special upgraded unit for Space Marines is the Terminator. Now a lot of cool things can be done out of this world with a relay while everything's building here. And let me get that ability for the librarian first. 
and the orbital relay lets you put three unit types inside of the building okay you could put two space marine squads in or three space marine squads in dreadnoughts can be dropped from the orbital relay so a really cool strategy people will buy a dreadnought buy a second dreadnought one dreadnought can fit in there and then the other one is at 100% built in the queue, so while they're cooking, we'll let them go. And then you would drop a Space Marine squad, have another squad right here ready, drop that squad, and then we have Terminators. These can be dropped out of the barracks. So you can drop a total of, I want to say, three, four... We'll do the math, we'll do the math. You can drop insane amounts of units right in people's faces. Okay, and what you want to do, you can put the Librarian with the ranged Terminators. Again, the, the same theme, we want to keep our Commanders on ranged. These Terminators, while really good at, in melee, they have Power Fists. They're monsters in ranged combat. And then you have melee Terminators that can be run in with their shields and these hammers and put the pain on enemies. Okay, so we have our, our next Dreadnought here. I'm going to get another Space Marine squad just to show you. We have another Dreadnought. Terminators can also teleport once it's done researching. And what we do, we have these... Oh, come back, come back. <laughs> we have our Terminators here with our Librarian. And normally you would put either the Force Commander or the Chaplain. Where are we? What's... Yeah, these clowns. This, this is a death ball. We'll be okay. We'll, we'll come back to that. So let's go ahead and we'll just put these Marines in the drop pod. Terminators are done. Let's go ahead and load them up. We've got our vehicles ready. So we now have a drop pod for Space Marines, a drop pod for Dreadnoughts, another Dreadnought cooking. We would have another Space Marine squad here. And it's also Salt Marines. They're melee units. You generally don't see too much play with them. Um, they're another... They're, they have fly-in... Actually, we're full pop. They fly in and kind of keep everybody busy while this range blob melts people. So we have everything all lined up. Let's put everything on our hotkeys. And you can drop a whole lot of heat into enemy bases really quickly. Now, if you're facing this combination, the best way to deal with it is play it safe. If you're versing a land raider and two predators, go for the predators first. The predator tanks. They're the DPS. 5,800 hit points is not 10,000 with this buff. You're going to kill them real quick. And then the land raider is easy to deal with. So say we drive in here. Got our land raiders come. Can you get in? Get involved. Let's get it done. Yes, Just put the scouts, scouts in the, the scouts rhino transport the truck. Land raiders are the only units capable of carrying terminators. Sometimes you can hide a squad of termies in here and surprise people. So we come in. Oh no, this is a whole bunch of enemies. Start dropping. So we drop two dreadnoughts immediately, our space marine squad, and then we double up with our terminators. And you'll see, now there's a whole lot of heat in the enemy base. And it's very tough to fight this off. So let's just say we're taking a lot of damage. The cool thing with the Librarian... Yeah, this guy stands no chance. Say you're taking a whole lot of damage. Again, you want to time this ability right. Say we're waiting in and we're taking just massive casualty numbers. And our, our Terminator's starting to get killed. That's real tough. As you can see, they're getting hit with missiles. They don't care. Um insane unit for the space room. Look at this. What is going on here? Say we're taking a lot of damage. Word of the Emperor on the Librarian. You slap that down. All units around the Librarian cannot die. Okay? Cannot die. That is a ridiculous buff. And it lasts for quite a while. So you can't die. And then that gives you time to reposition or maybe get some kind of heavier artillery or, you know, support to move in um the space marine is all about this this just insane strike you know we just dropped in the middle of someone's base and they have to respond to this meanwhile your whole army is over here pushing up doing damage capturing points reducing the enemy's ability to fight back okay Again, this was me just rambling on for 20 minutes. I wouldn't keep this army camped here. Instead, once I was done capturing this, I would push over and capture this point. I would deny the relic, okay? You want to keep pressure on the enemy. If you're spending money on military units, you better use military, okay? 
Um, other little tips and tricks, it's always kind of good to get another stronghold or another HQ at some point in the game. It allows you an additional six generators. Over time, your generators will start to decay. Same thing with your listening posts. You start losing money. Um, a strategy online, if the game's going that long, delete all your generators and your listening posts and rebuild them. Um, other strategies, sometimes it's worth it to build a second barracks. Um, turrets and minefields are no joke. Minefields are my favorite thing to do in this game, just watching units try and flank and they get blasted. Um, and yeah, that's really it for Space Marines. Again, this was not really anything about builds, more just kind of unit highlights, um, things to look for, um, you know, just composition units and just different things here and there you want to kind of be aware of with Space Marines. Um, again, one of the more basic factions you can play, but also one of the strongest in my opinions. All right, so this has been me. We're going to head over to the score screen. All right, last but not least, and then you can get rid of me. All right, we have our military resources, technology. Uh, this is just a way to kind of gauge, I mean, how well you did versus the enemy. In the resource tab, you can kind of see, oh, maybe I need to upgrade more of my requisition points to kind of get that rec up. Um, or you'll see a lot of popular builds with chaos teams. They'll immediately rush three to four generators and go straight to tier three. So you can go, wow, how much power did that chaos player generate to get to tier three so quickly? And we're only at eight minutes in the game. Um, little things like that. You could see how much research has been done. Um, how many flags and such were captured. So it's good to kind of keep an eye on this and kind of just reflect on how the enemy did. And maybe you want to save the replay um, and watch it again and go, dang, that guy's build order was really good. Uh, you'll go sick build order, chaos, meme. And you'll save it um, and kind of go from there. So again, my name has been Unseen Strike. We'll get some more of these video done, uh, videos done for other races at some point. Uh, we'll start doing some high-level games. We'll cover some of those. Um, and maybe we'll throw some funny meme videos in from time to time and kind of break down some of the metas a little bit better. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe. More importantly, if you could leave a comment down below on what your favorite faction is, I'd love to know. And why isn't it Imperial Guard?